After five seasons in Milwaukee in the city's first NBA championship in 50 years, the Bucks fired head coach Mike Boonehoser last week, and now Milwaukee has arguably the most important decision in franchise history on its hands. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Scott Proctor, and this right here is Proctor's Point of View. Before we get into today's episode, make sure you drop a like, make sure you comment and subscribe, and if you do comment, keep an eye out because that comment could be featured in a future video like this one right here. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of this episode to find out which head coach is on the opposite of a hot seat and doing a hell of a job throughout the 2023 playoffs thus far. But let's get to the topic at hand here today. There is a large contingency of Bucks fans and basketball fans in general who believe the firing of head coach Mike Boonholzer was unjust. After all, he went an impressive 271 and 120 in the regular season across five seasons in Milwaukee, 38 and 23 in the playoffs. Both of those marks are number one in the NBA during that span. But also obviously led the Bucks to their first NBA championship in 50 years just a couple years ago. And this season, they were the number one seed in the Eastern Conference once again. But along with this success came plenty of disappointment. It started during the 2019 Eastern Conference Finals and the Bucks blew a 2-0 lead and lost four straight to the Toronto Raptors. The next year, the number one seed, the Bucks were upset by the Heat in the bubble. And then after losing in the Eastern Conference semifinals in seven games to Boston last year, including a closeout game six at home, the Bucks became just the fifth number one seed in NBA history to lose a series to a number eight seed when Jimmy Butler and the Heat once again sent them home this postseason. I won't even get into the myriad of questionable in-game adjustments or lack thereof made by Butler over the last few seasons regarding timeouts and other elements, but with arguably the best player in the planet in Giannis Antetokounmpo on the roster, there was just no more time for to wonder if Bud was the right man for the job, but Firing Bud comes with most important decision in franchise history. And that decision requires hiring a head coach who Giannis not only approves of, but a head coach who he can win big with. Fumbling this decision right here, if you're the Milwaukee Bucks and hiring the wrong coach, that could have franchise altering effects. Yes, we know Giannis Antetokounmpo is loyal as ever, maybe almost to a fault to the city of Milwaukee, but... But things can change quickly, and we've seen that throughout NBA's history. In fact, things have already changed pretty quickly around Giannis. Drew Holiday will be 33 years old at the start of next season. Chris Middleton will be 32 years old with a player option next season worth $40 million, hamstringing their camp situation a little bit. Brooke Lopez is going to be 35 years old. He's also going to be an unrestricted free agent. And there are seven bench players, including Jay Crowder, including Joe Ingles, who will be free agents this offseason. Those are a lot of question marks, a lot of aging question marks for a team that currently doesn't even have a head coach. Giannis is eligible to sign a two or three year extension in September. But if he's not totally convinced of the direction of a new head coach in this roster, it could certainly be scary hours in Milwaukee and not the good kind. But from one head coach who just got fired, to a head coach who could be looking at an extension perhaps after this season. That's Darvin Ham, who's currently coaching his ass off right now in the playoffs. After taking care of the Grizzlies in round one in six games, Ham has made some really nice, some really timely adjustments so far throughout this Golden State Warriors series. First and foremost, putting Jared Vanderbilt, arguably the best defender on the team, aside from Anthony Davis, on Stephen Curry to chase him around the perimeter was an excellent move that's paid off dividends so far. And also getting Lonnie Walker off the end of the bench and into some crunch time minutes. He had the most minutes of any bench player of the Lakers in game four, and he played well. Those are two huge adjustments by Darvin Ham and the Lakers because of it. Look like they they can make it back to the NBA Finals this time with Darvin Ham leading the way. But that's going to do it for this episode. As always, make sure you drop a like, make sure you comment and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow right here on Proctor's POV. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out our other videos, and don't forget to smack that subscribe button down below while you're at it. Also, for more great and original content, head right over to bbmsports.com.